Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching, boom, the political vigilante. Look at that truth. Oh, look at that PV mug available at GrahamElwood.com. Also now available at the uh, Patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. I've added merch now. You can support the show, get exclusive content, and you get cool merch. Mmm. Boy, that tastes like truth. So a uh, great way to support the show is go to Patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, and you can submit articles at the $5 topic tier. tier like Eric Husso has done. Uh, Eric, thank you for supporting the show. You've been doing it for quite a while, and we appreciate this. So Chris Hedges has put out a new article yesterday or the day before that just, you know, Hedges is brilliant. And this is, we're going to go into it a little bit. Listen to this article, Jesus, Endless War, and the Rise of American Fascism. The Democratic Party is hoping to thwart an election route by running against the elect expected Supreme Court decision on abortion. This is depressingly all that is left of its political capital. Chris said just came out on May night. So it's a lengthy article. And he also says it on his podcast, uh, but we're just going to go into some touch points of it. It's, it's brilliant writing and it's like a laser hedges. is just like a laser that's he sees America in a way that few other journalists can. They don't even have the ability to see it in the way he does. Um, the democratic party, which had 50 years to write Ro Roe v. Wade into law with Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama in full control of the white house and Congress at its inception of their of their presidencies is banking on its elected strategy around the expected Supreme Court decision to lift the judicial prohibition on the ability of states to enact laws restricting or banning abortions. I doubt it will work. I didn't even realize I was like, yeah, you're right. Even Jimmy Carter is involved in they could have done something. Right. Carter, again, he got elected in 1976 because after Watergate, let's just give everybody a quick timeline here. Um, Nixon got reelected in 72. Watergate happened, came out 73, around 73, 74, Nixon resigned. Vice President Gerald Ford became president and he ran against Carter in 76 and Carter like wiped him out and they got control of the Senate and the House and all this stuff. Sound familiar? Didn't do anything with it. Not to mention on that list, Obama and Bill Clinton both of those guys had eight years and didn't do it. The Democratic Party's hypocrisy and duplicity is the fertilizer for Christian fascism. And he knows this. He's an ordained minister. So he tracks the evangelical right and how crazy they are because he really knows it. Um, it's exclusive focus on the culture wars and identity politics at the expense of economic, political, and social justice fueled a right-wing backlash and stoked the bigotry, racism, and sexism it sought to curtail. This is a thing we've talked about on this show because the Democratic Party has abandoned working class people and instead for all of this identity politics. That's what they've done. So now instead of like working class issues, we're, we're talking about all this identity politics stuff a exclusively. That's, and that's what he said. That's all they're talking about. They should be sure we should have equality and LGBTQ rights. I'm all for that. And the democratic party should be supposedly fighting for that, but not at the expense of like supporting unions and workers and all that. That, and that's what they've done. The democratic party and the head just talks about it in this article brings Christian smalls in there. After he won, Smalls and all those those like labor organizers, Smalls we've had on the show like two years ago, talking about, you know, and getting that Amazon warehouse unionized. And then Joe Biden brings him to the White House to try to take credit for that while they're literally at the same time backing union busting. The Democratic Party is so full of shit. The Christian fascists have coalesced a cult-like fashion around Donald Trump. They are bankrolled by the most retrograde forces of capitalism. The war industry loves the Christian fascists who turn every conflict from Iraq to Ukraine into a holy crusade to crush the latest iteration of Satan. And the people bankrolling these Christians are, some of them aren't Christians at all. They're just capitalists like Hedges is talking about. I urge you to go read the whole article. It's, it's amazing. I mean, he talks about how nuts Marjorie Taylor Greene is and she's propped up and allowed to happen. And the Democrats have no answer for that. You know? And when this Roe v. Wade thing happened, everyone's like, oh, all these, all these vote any blue will do liberals are like mad at the Republicans. Completely turning a blind eye to all the Democrats 
Hedges just listed, in addition to Pelosi that backs anti-abortion Democrats, uh, Hillary Clinton picked Tim Kaine as a running mate in 2016. He's an anti-abortion Democrat. Ruth Bader Ginsburg could have retired under Obama. And there was another, I think it was Scalia who, who, who died. I forget the other, th there was, Obama could have got two liberal justices put in there and didn't. We saw the consequences of this dysfunction in Weimar, Germany, and Yugoslavia, a conflict I covered in the New York Times. Political stagnation and economic misery be breeds rage, despair, and cynicism. It gives rise to demagogues, charlatans, and con artists. Hatred drives political discourse. Violence is the primary form of communication. Vengeance is the highest good. War is the chief occupation of the state. It is the vulnerable and the weak who pay. Once again, he uh, Hedges nails it. And to talk about this article, let's bring on the host of Get Your News On with Ron, Ron Placone. Whoop, there it is. Ron, how What's are you? What's up, Graham? Good to see you, buddy. Nice to see you too, buddy. So I don't know if you've read this full uh, article by Hedges, but I haven't read the full thing. No, I, I just got the I just got the snippets. But yeah, brilliant prose as always. And uh, you know, very uplifting stuff. Solid. <laughs> I think that's his closer. <laughs> well, I think he sings the last part. When he does, he does this live. Yeah. 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 Fun. Yeah. When he does this live, he usually sings the last part on a unicycle and then he does a cartwheel and uh, folks love it, you know, with a banjo, like ding, 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 we're heading to like, he sings that last part with a banjo. Yeah. It's he doesn't smash a watermelon, but he just kind of eats one. That's like his thing. <laughs> he just well, eats he like, like a big thing. He punches it, then he eats and he just, it. And then he, sometimes he has a coconut too, like just a variety of fruit. Usually how he, how he ends the show. Hedges you, you really is the, he's the Gallagher of, of indie journalism, pretty much. He, um, <laughs> that's what he does. He only does the county fair circuit. <laughs> Hedges man is so like I was first turned on to him with Death of the Liberal Class about yeah, five years ago, six years ago, maybe. And that book was like blew my mind. And ever since that's all he's been doing. And you read this. And he's so right. It's such a laser and it shows how inadequate the Democratic Party is and how they're allowing these fascisms, the fascists to rise up. And then when these fascists rise up, the Democrats go, we're your only hope to stopping them, yeah. even though they've helped create them and they've done, they've allowed them to happen. I mean, and, and like, well, here's what it is, man. The Democrats are as ineffective as they are because of how gruesome the Republicans are. And the Republicans are as gruesome as they are because of how ineffective the Democrats are. And that's the gravy trade. Like they rely on each other. Like, it's just like, Hey, like there is not anything. I mean, I guess I can't say this for 100% certainty, but, but to the best of my knowledge, there is nothing as gruesome as the Republican poli Republican party in any political experiment that has the amount of power they do. Like, like you take any other pseudo democratic experiment in the West, you know, in other countries, you know, like, 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 like EU countries, whatever else, there's nothing quite like the Republican party that had, that's a major party. You know, I mean, I mean, there's some straight up fascist parties in other places where they have a bunch of political parties and they have no power because it's just a handful of like extreme lunatics, but like the Tories, they look like a charity case compared to the Republicans. They're to the left of the Democrats are crying out loud and they're terrible. So it's like the Republicans are only able to be this gruesome because the Democrats are just so useless and ineffective and quite frankly, right wing all on their own. Right. Like they're a right because the, the Republicans keep going further and further. So Democrats keep going further and further too. So like the center is just, you know, neocon basically. And, and that's, that's the system they rely on. And yeah, I mean, Hedges called that. I mean, I read Death of the Liberal Class in college and it was just, holy shit, man. Because that that's what, he, that's what he unpacked then. And he was yeah. calling it back then when everybody was real excited because there was this young uh, senator from Illinois who was talking really pretty and everybody loved him. And he surprised everyone and eventually became president. And then nothing changed. Nothing. It got worse. It got worse. I mean, the military spending got worse. The Wall Street bailouts got worse. The abandonment of the working class got worse. 
I mean, the, I mean, the one inflammation was like Obamacare and that was just like such a half measure. It's not even funny. And it, it's really, it's, it's, it's staggering to watch it like literally get worse in real time in the last 12 years. I mean, I think death of the liberal class came out what 2010 or 2007 or nine or 10 or something like that. I mean, I think it was before that before I could be mistaken unless I'm confusing it with something else. But yeah, I think it was, I think it was like a little further back than that. And Aaron, hedges just got taken off TV because he had this show on contact on RT and they, they just canceled it. I mean, they just took him off the air. Like it's, it, and he's seen oh, it, it is it time. is 2010 all right yeah. it is 2010 so i, I read it and in, in god that that's a sign of getting old it wasn't undergrad i read it it was grad school i read it right wrong wrong education era for me <laughs> but he, oh, that well. book comes out in the middle of obama's first term right you know in the middle of this euphoria of you know oh ding dong the witch is dead he's going to get us out of iraq and afghanistan and instead took us from two wars to seven, dropped more bombs than Bush, gave more more stimulus to the banks after the, the, the housing crisis and did nothing and allowed six million foreclosures to happen. I mean, like that just on and on and, and could have, you know, again, could have codified Roe v. Wade, didn't, could have put a liberal justice in there, didn't, could have really encouraged RBG to do it. Uh, to retire, yeah. And could have fought for the pick that was rightfully his. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they did nothing to fight for that pick because they're like, well, Hillary's got it in the bag. And besides, we can use this. We can dangle this over voters heads. So he didn't fight for the pick that was rightfully his. And you know what? People don't amplify this enough when you're listed all those other things. Trump's last judge, Donald Trump, the supposed uh, traitor in chief who was impeached twice. His last judge was pushed through in record time during a pandemic. Push through in record time. And every oh, the the Senate, it was Republicans. They couldn't have done anything. Bullshit. They could have used every stall tactic imaginable. All they needed was two months. They could have threatened to shut down. They could have drummed up public opinion saying, hey, this is an impeached guy. He shouldn't be able to do this. They could have drummed up public opinion saying, hey, in elections in two months, let the people decide. They could have been like, hey, we can't. It's not safe to go in right now. They could have used every stall bill. Two months was all they needed. And people who make excuses for them, and I know you're out there on Twitter, holy shit, I hope you're getting something from the DNCP payroll, because holy shit. People who still make excuses for them, I ask you this question. If the shoe was on the other foot, if the Republicans had the House, but didn't have the Senate, and didn't have the White House, and there was a judge going through, and they had two months, would Republicans have pulled it off? I would be willing to bet you anything they would have pulled it off. And you know it too. You know it yeah. too. But the Democrats just should record time for a supposed impeached president. For a supposed that remember that performance art piece? That that like, like the guy can run again if he feels like it. Yeah, of course. It's it's and it's again, it's just more, it's more performative. I mean. They just, they, they don't want to hear it. It's on, the Americans are so propagandized. They don't want to hear it. And they're so easily sh shooken and scared into something whoa, that they don't want to look at the evil that's right in their own backyard. Is that and your ride? You got to go. This is my ride. Yeah. They're coming to get me. They're shutting right. me down. Like the fact, you know, they're like, oh, we can't even risk the fact he could go big on rumble. So we're going to, we're going to send a squad car to rest. Those are the, those are the sirens. <laughs> the sirens to come. Get us. It's amazing. I mean, hedges, and um, it, it, the thing is, too, about Edges is he doesn't offer some, like, big solution at the end. And, and because it's like, I don't know what else to do. I mean, he's just been watching this happen for the last two decades, just this slow collapse of America going insane and becoming this, like, corporate war state with these crazy evangelicals and then the identity politics of the Democratic Party all at the behest of, of these, you know, kleptocrats, you know, it's, I don't want to, I don't like being doom and gloom, especially on this show. I like to find like alternatives. And the one thing I will say that gives me hope and you and I have talked about it before is again, I was just going through Twitter today and then two or three more Starbucks have all gone union. Yeah. Like that's just happening. 
And that to me is the, the one like silver lining that I kind of hang a, a little bit of hope on is that this could, that could be the change that people just go, nope, because, because Americans, you know, I've talked about it. You can talk about all these lofty ideas and this party and that party and identity politics and the evangelicals and all that. But when gas is six bucks a gallon and your grocery bills 30% more than it used to be, and you're paying, getting shit wages and other places are getting unionized, you fight for that. And yeah. that could effectively cause huge change. Well, that's the thing, man. I mean, everything does have its yin and its yang, right? So, yeah, I honestly never thought it would get this bad. Like, like, I cannot believe some of the stuff that has gone on in the past, you know, especially in the past, like, five or six years, but but really in the past, like, decade and a half. And, you know, there are times where I think, man, if I had a time machine and could go back to see 22-year-old me, would I have given him some different advice when his cousins ask him if he wants to move to Italy? I might have, but uh, but but here's the other side of it, man. Um, if you would have told that 22 year old me that, hey, do you think you'll ever see a day when socialism isn't a dirty word in the United States? I'd say, yeah, probably not. Well, guess what? We're seeing it when you'd see a rise in unions like this. And so quickly. No, I wouldn't have predicted that. So. There's that there's another side to it, too, man. So so, you know, I mean, yeah, the, there there are still some reasons for encouragement, but but yeah, it ain't pretty. It ain't pretty. Um, well, Rob Placone, thank you for taking time to come on the show. Tell everybody where we're, you and I are going to be at the end of July. We're going to be in the Northwest, one of my favorite areas in the world. I, I freaking love the Northwest. We're going to be at Portland on July 28th, Seattle on July 29th and Vancouver British Columbia on July 30th. Uh, so that's going to be a really fun weekend. You can get tickets at romplacone.com or grandmelwood.com. And also I'll mention real quick, I'm doing the Reykjavik Fringe Festival in Iceland. My shows are on June 28th and July 3rd. So if you're up in Iceland, check out the Fringe and come hang out. Thank you, Ron Placone, for being on the show, my friend. We will see you soon and come see us in the Pacific Northwest and shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. <laughs>